We are ready, Sarah. Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. Today, our speaker is Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Manganaro. He serves as Furman's Army ROTC Professor of Military Science. He has over 15 years of experience serving in all levels of the military, from tactical to strategic. He went to Hofstra University in Long Island, New York for his bachelor's degree in business administration and Georgetown University in Washington, DC for his master's in policy management. Today, he's going to tell us about the program at Furman, have two of his cadets here and tell us about ways that they can relate to those of us in Ali who have military interest and military background. Here's Chris. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm coming to you live from actually something that we're also doing in, in conjunction with RTC we'll talk about is um, the academy. So those that have gone to uh, West Point, Annapolis and stuff like that. So I'm downtown right now uh, working with Congressman Timmons office on interviewing a bunch of high school students. And I can just tell you that um, these young men and women that are still coming in the military uh, to include uh, Mary and Josh that are on today are still joining and they're still serving and they're still being a part of, of the group here uh, that we call the military, which is great to see in here. So no matter what you're seeing or hearing or knowing about out in the world, just know that there's still a good group of people. So I believe Sarah is gonna share some slides. Um, and if she is, when she pulls that up, just let me know, Sarah, and I'll kind of walk us through just a little bit about what RTC is doing here at Furman. And then at the end, talk to you a little bit about how you can get involved and in some of the uh, initiatives that we have launching with our Military Alumni Association. Give me just one moment and I'm gonna pull that screen up. There we go. Excellent. Nice. Excellent. Um, so yeah, if you can uh, maybe go full screen on that, uh, Jessica, that's excellent. So uh, again, uh, I am Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Manganero and I have the unique opportunity and the privilege of, of serving here as the Professor of Military Science. Uh, my brief background, I enlisted in the military. I did not uh, have the grades or the aptitude or the abilities back in uh, 1999 to say, I'm going to go uh, be an officer right away. So I enlisted in the Army, uh, raised my hand, and I'm from Long Island, New York. I lost most of my accent, minus a few words that come out here and there, so you might catch it. Uh, but I... <laughs> I went to Fort Jackson, South Carolina, a little bit about an hour and a half uh, down the street from us. And I went there in July of 2000 and I sweat my, my took us off. And so for those that are out there that know about basic training, all the videos and movies you hear about, um, they're absolutely true. <laughs> and that experience is very tough. And so I graduated from basic training. I went back to New York. Uh, I went to uh, college. I started college. And then about a week or two into my freshman year of college, 9-11 hit and struck New York about 10 miles west of where I went to school in New York. And um, that day, as many of us know, kind of changed my life, changed everyone's lives. So uh, from that point forward, I, I pursued my degree from Hofstra, graduated, uh, got married to my, uh, my college girlfriend, sweetheart, the best woman in the entire world. And we've been off on this trip now for about 16 plus years. So I find myself here wanting to be here, wanting to give back and teach. And um, I have a staff of about uh, eight, eight military members that work at Furman uh, for um, that are uniformed like myself, and we have four civilians. And our cadet battalion population total about 90 cadets. And we'll talk through that more today and kind of let you talk to two of our cadets that are online today talking through that. So um, go ahead and hit the next slide, please. So uh, commonly people say, what is ROTC? And what, um, how do you become an officer in the Army? So first and foremost, there is only three ways you, you can become an officer in the United States Army. And that is through the first one, which is United States Military Academy, also known as West Point, for those that are familiar with that. Uh, that only gets about 1,000, 1,100 or so um, by congressional mandate. That's the, only, that's the max amount that they can put in. Down there at the bottom, Officer Kennett School at Fort Benning, that's for people that have already enlisted in the military or serving in the military, and they want to go from being an enlisted soldier, maybe a, a sergeant or, or whatnot, to be an officer. That middle rung right there, ROTC, is the majority of officers, to include myself, that came through uh, and become a second lieutenant, right around uh, 4,000. And Furman is just one of 274 schools across the country that host ROTC. So it's pretty unique. Sometimes people think the only place you can become an officer is through West Point. Um, and that's, that's not true. And we actually make up the majority of that. Uh, next slide, please. And then more specifically about our battalion. Uh, so our battalion here at Furman was founded in 1950. 
Um, and so this is our 70 year anniversary here at Furman University. Uh, we have two partnership schools or crosstown schools that feed into Furman. So all the cadets train here. Um, all the cadets uh, uh, work here at Furman University when they're in school and that's North Greenville University. And then just most recently, Bob Jones joined us in the fall of 2018. Um, giving our grand total, bring us to about 87 cadets. And um, I know back, uh, some folks have said, you know, from 1950 to 1973, Furman, uh, it was a requirement uh, for all males had to take uh, military science, at least in their freshman and sophomore years, they had to take the class. And then after we uh, went to an all volunteer, mil uh, volunteer military and uh, after the Vietnam War, that number had dropped down and down to the 30s and 40s and sometimes. Uh, so to, for us to be up in the 87 numbers of all volunteer, uh, that number is staggering and pretty good and a good sign for both the school and for the community to know that there's people out there serving. Uh, just another kind of tidbit for those that, that kind of know what, what are your requirements and what do you get. Any cadet um, that receives an Army RTC scholarship gets the, also their room and board covered. So the way I factor this, uh, I'm not allowed to, so I know it's recorded, but I'll just say it anyways. It doesn't matter. You know, the term full ride, um, your, your ROTC cadets that win a scholarship to Furman, North Greenville, Bob Jones, the school offers a grant and covers their room and board. So truly, uh, the students are going to school um, free of charge and receive some stipend and some money to support them, and then they graduate and serve. Um, and down there on the bottom, uh, we have a total of 14 general officers who have graduated since 1950 uh, up until now that have graduated generals in the Army. Um, and one of them we have on today, uh, Major General Chris Ballard, the second from the right. So um, amazing that a little school, a uh, little tiny school in Greenville, South Carolina, up there on Poinsett Highway can produce uh, some amazing officers. And that's just a testament, I think, to the education and to the people that come through this school. So um, my school, Hofstra, I believe we have one, uh, one or two. And, uh, you know, different, you think the bigger the school, the better. So, um, but, but definitely a good, a good sign there. So um, next slide, please. All right. And then, you know, more importantly, people think uh, when I'm interviewing folks and we're talking about RTC, they think that you're a cadet 24 seven and that you're, we, we march everywhere and that we are um, making them do uh, their in basic training, that they live in barracks. And that's absolutely not true. And so RTC, the really, the good thing about RTC is it allows you to get um, a school experience. So you're going to be in clubs and you're going to be, and, and Mary and Josh, I'm going to turn over to you very shortly um, to talk to you about your experiences, but really it's an immersion into both schooling and well as uh, uh, military. So we just got back from a field training exercise and um, we flew a helicopter, we flew helicopters down there. Uh, we shot weapons. We uh, stayed out in the field and we did all that stuff. That's probably one of the, and it was all based on leadership. So our cadets are in charge of all the battalion, myself and my cadre members, we kind of monitor and keep things moving. So as you see in the pictures there, um, male, female, black, white, green, purple, we really don't care. Um, our battalion is, is a mixture of people and we move around and we train. We train like we do athletes. So our physical fitness groups, um, we're able to do fitness training um, and are able to do that safely as well as our outdoor um, uh, training as well. So um, I'll pause there and I would like to start, if you're okay, I'd like to turn over Jessica to um, first uh, cadet Josh Helton. I'll introduce him. Let Josh tell us a little bit about himself, um, why he chose to come to Furman, what is he enjoying about um, um, being there. And then um, if you can go back one slide, Jessica and stay on the, uh, or just, yeah, bring, bring his screen up. But uh, Josh Helton's a junior. He is a, uh, what we call MS3 or a junior cadet in the um, Army RTC program. And uh, hey, Josh, there you are. And uh, he's, he's going to kind of give us a little tip about his experience. Um, he was attending and trying to go through uh, West Point and that experience. But I know he shifted his, his mindset and why he shifted his mindset and what he's doing from there. So, Josh, uh, go over. Uh, it's all over to you. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, as Lieutenant Colonel Meganero said, uh, I'm Josh Helton. I'm a junior here at Furman University uh, or MS3. Um, I graduated high school in 2017, uh, where I was then accepted to play basketball at United States Military Academy Preparatory School. Um, I played basketball there for a year. Um, and with a mix of uh, some different things going on, I realized that um, the military academy wasn't for me. And I was really excited to pursue RTC at Furman. Um, outside of basketball, Furman was my top school. Um, and through the RTC program and the grades I had, you know, dually at in high school and at the prep school, I uh, was able to get that scholarship to come to Furman. Um, as Colonel Meganero said, um, it's it's not uh, all inclusive. It uh, it definitely gives you a diverse look on on college, and I think it's it's been the perfect amount. Um, I'm in FCA. Uh, I'm in the Fuwak Club here at Furman, the Furman Outdoors Club. 
um, involved with different club sports like club basketball and club rugby. Um, and then I also have RTC. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the mornings, you know, my classes with the RTC program in a lab once a week um, definitely gives me the, the full college experience with the plenty of knowledge throughout the week. Um, I feel like when um, I'm in RTC, you know, we're wearing uniforms on Tuesday, Thursdays or Wednesdays, I can really flip on that switch and, and bring out the pen and paper and, and learn a lot about what's going on and prepping for this next summer, which for the junior year is very important. Um, you go to advanced camp the summer between your junior and senior year. Um, and that's, that's one of the, the bigger accumulating events that you're graded on your leadership and your physical fitness. Um, and, and really just prepping to be an officer when you graduate from and as a senior. Um, I didn't know what other direction you want me to go with, with that, sir. <laughs> No, that was good, Josh. No, we're letting you guys speak your piece out. I know at the end we're going to have some questions and answers for the, for many uh, all the members out there. But, yeah, very well, very well said. And Josh is one of – he's one of my top guys, i um, be honest with you. So um, he's bright. He was this weekend. He was leading people out there, and, and it got really cold and rainy on Sunday. And Josh Sheldon's out there leading. So great job, and, and he's, he's great. He'll be on staying on, too, at the end if you have the questions. Um, flipping the script. Uh, so as a junior, he's getting ready. He kind of knows that this, he's committed. He's going in. Now I have a freshman. So I'd like to introduce uh, Cadet Mary Ashley. Mary is a, um, she won a scholarship as well. Uh, she's one of um, 21 female cadets in our battalion. And, uh, and really saying female cadet is, is fine, um, but she's, she's a paladin battalion cadet and we don't matter. It doesn't matter. Again, gender doesn't matter. Uh, position, rank, and, and pushing. And Mary shows up in August. Uh, coming out of the last COVID semester of school in North Carolina, and she's just been killing it. And again, this weekend out there, uh, she'd like to share her experience of why she chose firm and what she's doing and stuff like that. But what this experience, Mary, what did last week and this past weekend do for you kind of and help you learn that you couldn't have learned from um, staying at school there? So, uh, Mary, over to you. Thank you, sir. Um, so like like Lieutenant uh, Miganero said, my name is Mary Ashley. Um, I chose firm and RTC, um, firstly, because it they they were uh, super welcoming. Um, when I was going through the college application process, I applied to six or seven schools and um, subsequently six or seven programs. Um, and Furman was the only school to personally reach out to me um, and invited me down for, uh, for a day here at Furman, um, took a tour, had lunch with uh, um, the Colonel and a few cadets um, at the, the dining hall. Um, so I think that that really um, stood out to me and was a major factor of why I chose Furman. Um, I think secondly, uh, I absolutely love um, how personal everything here at Furman is and um, in Furman ROTC. Um, I know that the cadre is super accessible. All of my, um, all the upperclassmen are super, um, are super accessible to me. Um, and as the, as the Colonel said, um, I'm an MS1, so I'm a freshman. Um, and right now my biggest, uh, my biggest focus is uh, developing leadership skills um, and taking on uh, learning um, about different leadership styles and how I want to implement those as an officer in the future. Um, at Furman, I'm involved in the Outdoor Club um, and Heller Service Corps, um, and I'm involved in the Chinese Language Program. Um, I'm uh, planning right now to double major in Chinese and Political Science. Um, so I'm super excited about continuing through ROTC in the future um, and figuring out what I want to branch um, and what I want my military career to look like in the future. Thanks. And Mary, just to segue, um, how was your weekend? How were those meals ready to eat? Which, by the way, they've gotten better over the years. But how was your uh, how was what was what did you take away from this past weekend's field training? Uh, I think, as I said before, uh, I really liked looking at the different leadership styles that I saw out in the field. I liked looking at um, how all the different cadets um, conducted themselves in the field and how those different leadership styles um, were actually implemented, because we do a lot here um, during labs and in classes, um, but it was really nice to see how those translated um, into, into actual skills that we, ha that we, have, to, um, we have to have in the field. So. Yeah, figuring out how to wake wake up at uh, a certain time, eat, and all in the dark, and get to a certain spot, like you said, Mary takes a certain leadership style that that we teach that there. So good. No, thank you, Mary. Yeah, stay on for the end. I appreciate your input on there. And um, uh, Jessica, if you can go back to the slides, we got a few more. Uh, kind of switching gears here, we got a few more, and then we'd like to open up for question and answers for those that have it. So we'll go back to the slide deck, and 
we'll shift gears here. Okay, so shifting gears, kind of that's what we are as the ROTC Battalion Army ROTC. Um, and now we're switching to kind of what we discussed before. I talked briefly about about it being, you know, 70 year anniversary of having ROTC on, on campus. And one thing we found and one thing we saw was, you know, a, a network, a, a tight network. We have a great alumni association. We have the Furman Singers. We have the Paladin Club. We've got these organizations, these affinity groups that say, hey, I identify with the Paladin Club. I played football here. I played soccer. I want to help um, that movement. Furman Singers, the amazing um, gifts from the herring that just happened and the things that are happening with them and um, the amazing musicians that have come out of here. That's amazing. Well, you know, we have about 1,200 alumni who, quote, who, who identify as, as military. And so we've never had an organization that kind of pulled that group together within the Alumni Association. And, and so this year, this past year, we launched um, in May, we've launched the Furman Military Alumni Association. So um, FMAA, because it can't be the military unless there's some acronym. So FMAA for short. And all branches, um, again, from 1950 to 1973, you can serve in ROTC it being army, but you could go into Navy. We have, we have alumni that are, that are Navy or Marines, um, Air Force. Um, but, and, and so we bring all that group together. And what we're trying to do is, is kind of now take what we have there, that network, and also give back to people like Josh and Mary and help support them, whether it be guest speaking and whatnot that we'll talk here in a second. So um, next slide, please. So here's some, uh, some oldies, but goodies. Uh, and, and, and things have not changed. So uh, for those that didn't know, uh, top left corner, uh, Furman, when it was established as an ROTC in 1950, we were initially an armor or a tank ROTC. And the unit was issued four um, M51 Sheridan tanks. And so yes, down in downtown uh, Greenville, they would take these tanks and they would drive them all the way up, uh, I guess point set, I don't know how they got them up here. Uh, and they would train on what's currently Furman's campus. And then they would drive them back down and park them. And those are the cadets standing out in front of downtown with the vehicles that they had. I'm um, on the right top right, weapons marksmanship it hasn't changed. Mary and Josh, they just did the same exact thing uh, 70 years later with different weapons and different training, but we did that. Um, the bottom right, that is a color guard. Uh, we do those events here on campus. We do them off campus too, but those are the, the ROTC colors. Um, this, the color guard is able to carry the colors, provided that for events, and we'll do that as well for the FMAA. And then finally, in the bottom left, kind of the culmination for all that stuff is the bottom left. That is the first commissioning ceremony uh, in 1950. That's Colonel Brubaker reading right there. He was the first professor of military science, and they commissioned uh, three lieutenants. And so that began a, a process that is now uh, 70 years later and, and, and a thousand plus alumni. So um, it is occurring. People don't know sometimes you're like, I didn't know that occurred at Furman. But yeah, that's the rich history we have um, here at the school. So um, next slide, please. And then um, last thing before we give out contact information, more specifics and then some questions. So, you know, how can how can you get involved or how would you like to get involved? And really, have we have three major areas that we're looking at people get, to get involved with the Alumni Association. First is, you know, to be engaged, uh, to, to, to come out to the events when we can have them. We potentially, we we're planning, of course, everything was planned. We we're planning to have an alumni luncheon uh, next Wednesday uh, that had to get canceled for COVID. But we like to have a Veterans Day uh, luncheon held here at Furman University for all military alumni that can attend that. Um, we also do a Military Appreciation Day, uh, both for our football team and for our basketball team. And we had both of those last year. If you were at the events or heard about them, they were devoted um, um, both football and uh, basketball games that uh, we had uh, full um, free tickets for military alumni. And then we had um, some special guests and, and things that we did out there, pull up contest we did. And so it was to bring that culture, bring to kind of engage our network with our with our community. Uh, the second one down there, support, uh, really support. It, it, it's not it's not so much financial as much as to to be involved with the mentoring programs. We have a few programs, mainly guest speaking. Uh, several uh, there's about two members of the Ali team that come in and guest speak for us um, on leadership tactics of Vietnam or um, women's role in the military. And so those are things that I think you can still do and be involved in and help out. Um, and then the third one um, is an investment. And so that's folks that are, are giving or donating or helping. And, and for us, you know, the military provides um, 
their tuition, their fees, the school provides their books. What we're really, what we're really looking at investing in is not scholarship for academic reasons, but scholarship and leadership experiences. So for instance, um, there's an outdoor survival school in Boulder, Utah for five days and the cadets can go out there. It's a civilian run school and they can, um, can go through five days of survival school and bring that back. And you say, Chris, what does that help? Well, those survival skills, some of those skills are perishable that they'll lose, but some of them is the, the tenacity uh, the grit, uh, the ability to push through so that when it rained on Sunday, um, their, their first thing they think is, well, at least we have food today. Um, and they can push through. And like Mary said, the leadership tack, um, traits that were learned while you're at the outdoor survival school. Uh, we also have a walk in Washington. So we take 10 cadets up to Washington, DC, uh, and we go to the Pentagon, Arlington, uh, the World War One and World War II Memorial. And then we have an alumni dinner up in Washington, DC. It's great because we also have a, a, our alumni network that's also up in, up in, um, DC and they get to see a tour and get to see kind of how the, the, the back runnings of the government work. And, and finally, you know, new equipment, things that we have that we are upgraded. So uh, the picture that had the workout facility, if you look at our physical activity center, when you're allowed back on campus, <laughs> on the back side of the physical activity center, we have about a twenty-eight dollars to $30,000 um, CrossFit Rogue Fitness Facility built, uh, provided by alumni funds as well as some university funds. That right there is changing culture here at Furman and, change, and helping our cadets. Because Mary and Josh, tomorrow morning at 6 in the morning, uh, I know where they'll be. They'll be with me working out there. And because our Army changed our new fitness test, we're able here at Furman to provide them that experience. So I think anywhere in those three, some people are in one area, some people are in three areas, but those are there's ways to get involved and to do that. And that's where we're looking for the alumni association to kind of come in, come alongside us, partner with us and help help move that train down the road. And then uh, one more slide, please. And here's um, here's where how you can stay connected with us and the best ways of staying connected. So first, you know, our building, for those that don't know, but our building is located, we actually have a, uh, the Bryan Center for Military Science is a building connected to the Physical Activity Center. So um, on the way to Ali, you can see us, our building right there, you can stop in. Um, when the restrictions are lifted, uh, we have, um, always have coffee brewing. Um, as General Ballard would say, we always have coffee brewing in the military, especially in the Army, but we're there and that's where we uh, conduct, that's where my offices are. But when we train as cadets, we train all over campus. We use the areas in the woods beyond the Daniel Chapel. We, we go up to North Village, <clears throat> excuse me, go up to North Village. And so we use the entire campus and we have a great partnership with uh, the university here to allow us to do that, which is a blessing. Uh, but our two social media handles. Uh, so we'll leave it up there. If you want to jot it down, take a screenshot. We can send these slides out to everybody. So Instagram and Facebook. And we're putting a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, a lot of testimonials out there on those two sites. So if you want to get in connected or just see how we're doing or see what the cadets are doing nowadays and how the new shooting um, uh, marksmanship training was done, it's completely different. It's different. It's changed since when I came in and we have some video online of how that worked out. So um, definitely please stay connected with us. And that's the best way to, to reach us. And also to um, you can send a note or email to me as well. So. All right, and then the last slide, I think, Jessica, I think I'm at for questions. Yes, we made it. So um, I'm gonna hit my mute button, but before I say that, um, thank you so much for the time here today. I, I appreciate you you having this. And uh, we, we planned this back in, I think July, we said, let's try and do it out there in November. We'll, we'll be okay near Veterans Day. So um, a, a very important day for our country today. And um, just know that there's still young men and women out there that, and, and that are serving and they serve, they serve a constitution. Uh, we serve a constitution and, and that's what we support. And so part of that is freedom of speech and the ability to vote. So um, thank you for that opportunity today. So I'll, I'll pause here if you have any questions for myself or uh, of the cadets. And um, I see General Ballard on too. So sir, if you wanna say a few words as well in the questions, comments, uh, please do so. Thank you. Okay, I'll turn it over to you, Sarah. Okay, I, I forgot to say beforehand, as we do in other Lunch and Learns, that you could write your questions under chat. But since we have a relatively small number of people, um, raise your hand or speak up <laughs> if you have a question. Um, my, I'll give you the first question, and that is uh, Mary and Josh, after you've been in this program, what do you owe the service for your scholarship? Unmute yourself so you can answer, please. So for our contract, uh, it's four years in school uh, for the four years following. Um, and the four years following is sort of a, a minimal requirement for that contract. Um, for people like myself, it's it will probably be a career. Um, I'm hoping to, to make a career in the Army. Um, so the four years minimum wasn't too much of a concern. Um, but I think it does vary as far as what component um, you are under. And if you want to speak more on that, sir, 
as far as National Guard? Yeah, so uh, both Mary and Josh have active duty scholarships. So when they graduate, they'll go on to full-time, like myself, full-time active duty. They owe the Army four years back uh, for that. If you go into the National Guard, we have some cadets that are on National Guard or Army Reserve scholarships. You know, the one week in a month, two weeks a year. They owe six years back doing that one week in a month, two weeks a year. Mm -hmm. Mary, would you like to comment? Take off your mute. Um, I think I'm... Um... Uh, similar to uh, to Cadet Helton, um, I also have the four-year obligation, but um, I'm looking to make it a career. Okay. Other questions? Other people? Dennis, do you have a question? <laughs> Um, I saw you were on mute. That's why I asked you. Yeah, uh, well, I wrote one, but it only went to Jessica. And my question was, uh, what percent of the RT students go on to serve? And I guess now I understand the program a little bit better. I would change it to be, uh, will end up in as a career um, in one of the services. Uh, the one gentleman um, is hoping to make a career, but I wondered if it's, 5% become career or 10 or 20? Yes, sir. So good question. And that data, you know, that's once they leave, um, that kind of gets harder to track. But I would say on the Army average, if you want to know that, so the Army average is about 20%, less than 20% will actually serve a full career in the military. Um, your initial commitment coming out is going to be four years. Some do four, some do six, some do eight. Uh, with the new retirement system, the old retirement system was you had to serve 20 years to get a pension. The new, the new retirement system is you can serve seven years and then take a 401k portion of that and go work at another company. So the Army really has changed their, their personnel management and has realized that if less than 20% of people make it to 20 years, there's 80% that serve whatever they serve and there's really no retirement or no benefit they're taking afterwards. So that's the big change. It's called the blended retirement system. It's changed, it changed uh, four years ago. So And all the new cadets are in that system. So they can serve as long as they want or they can leave at eight years and then take maybe some of that and go work for you know, Amazon or whatever, so. Mm -hmm. Here's a question from Elise. Will the students have to go through basic training with the branch of military they choose when they graduate from Furman? Uh, no, they, nobody goes through basic training. Uh, they go through summer training. So they go through a cadet summer training in their junior year. It's about 40 days long. It's not really a basic training, but it's more condensed version of all the things they've learned. But when they graduate, they don't go to basic training like I did down at Fort Jackson or Fort Benning. They go to their school. So they'll go to their branch school, um, college part two. Um, there is field training, but it's academic driven and giving them the ability to learn how to be an officer. So they know they do not need to go to basic training. Generally, how long is College two. Um, so the minimum is four months. The maximum for aviation, for those that want to fly helicopters, we have cadets that, uh, lieutenants, it takes them about a, over a year, year and a half to fly a helicopter. You mentioned labs. What is a lab? In, uh, Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, so, the, so the, the requirement for the cadets is they do physical training, uh, working out 6 to 7 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, Friday. There's no classes during that time, so it's a great time to be out there working out. And then they take an ROTC class. You know, they'll, they'll be in a class learning, um, depending on their level, like during the day, 150 to 240. And then lab, for us, our leadership lab, is all the things that build up to what we're doing at the, at the evaluation. So it's all about tactics. It's about land navigation without your cell phone. You know, getting from here to there without your cell phone, that's pretty hard to do with a map and a compass. Um, Josh and Mary, do you guys want to chime in and talk more about our labs? Yes, sir. I was going to say, uh, I kind of view labs as everything that we talk about in class is finally hands-on. So, you know, it, it may be one thing to, to take notes and to discuss about certain tactics or labs or things we're going over, but I feel like labs is the time that we really get to put that in motion and see what that looks like firsthand. Mary, um, you mentioned that you're majoring or uh, double majoring, you're majoring in Chinese. Will you think you'll be able to incorporate that with further military service? Yes, ma'am. Um, I know the Army has a certain um, list of languages that they consider to be strategic languages. Um, Chinese is one of those. Um, 
I'm not sure exactly how um, I, I'll be able to incorporate Chinese into my further career, but I know that that's something that um, the Army values a lot. Um, is the language learning ability, um, and especially when it comes to uh, like relations with foreign countries and stuff. So hopefully, I'll be able to continue that throughout my career. That's something that right now I'm planning on um, pursuing. Yeah, Mary, Mary, thanks, Mary. She made a good point, and she may or may not know this, so this might be the first time she ever hears this, which would be good, but we have strategic languages that actually uh, would pay a bonus. So we have uh, cadets that receive probably up to $1,000 extra a semester, um, and Chinese is one of them. So Mary, do well in your grades. You may get a check in the mail. So, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, congratulations. But, yeah, we have a, a Japanese, you know, some of the strategic languages, a couple of cadets, they take it. And to your question, Sarah, um, can that, does that mean she's going to be stationed in Korea? No, it doesn't. But when she goes to apply for her job, when she's, the Army's looking at where to assign her, that does help in, in doing that. So, Yeah, great. Chris, can I, can I chime in and offer too on that? Because uh, I was- Yes, I was, sir, go ahead. I was a German and poli-sci major at, at Furman as well. Um, you, you know, it's, it's always hard to, and tough to know where we're next going to be called upon, where, where Mary and Josh will need to go at the nation's call. But, but there's generally a philosophy that if you, if you can master a language, then your ability to pick up other languages, whether that be Pashto, Dari, or Korean, or something else, gets better because you've had a language experience. And so um, the Army has always encouraged its officers um, to, to, to seek a foreign language. We've got two sons that are now serving, both out of Furman, one's studying Chinese Mandarin, the other one, you know, uh, Hangul, Korean. Um, and, and that's just something as part of uh, army service that you, you learn to get along and work with other armies and other nations and to have a language background that allows you to start to, to kind of get after that is pretty important. I have a question. You, you mentioned helicopter training. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? What equipment and where? Yeah, so we, uh, good, good, thank you. Uh, so we partner with the, um, so our, our aviation, so our Chinook, our two blade helicopter unit um, based out of uh, Donaldson Center, uh, the company commander of that is a Furman grad. So one of the benefits we get and that we've used here is that um, our cadets during our field training exercise, we get two a year, one in the fall, one in the spring. Um, we're able to go down and do some training with them on uh, loading, unloading. Uh, they move us around. And so they did that. They flew us down. No traffic at all. Just telling you, it was nice driving down um, I-26 <laughs> without traffic. Uh, but I got there in about 40. I got there with a tailwind. I got there in 32 minutes from Furman to Fort Jackson. And so that was uh, Friday. But yes, sir, they partnered with us. And it's really just basic familiarization and um, ability to know that there's other ways to get around. So, um, yep. It's good, good support we get from them. Thank you. Other questions? Could you comment on some of the people that have come through Furman and have gone on to a, a career in the military? You mentioned we had several generals, and I know you can't uh, talk on all of them, but I'd like to hear a little bit about some of the ones uh, that come to your mind. Uh, well, I'll talk about one that is, is semi-famous, and then I'll introduce the one that was just speaking here and, and tell you kind of about them. So the semi-famous one would be in our office, um, the movie 12 Strong. It was uh, the horse soldiers in Afghanistan who kind of went in at first, um, and they went in, they secured uh, the, the, you know, support, and then they helped push that. So it was in the special forces, the leader of that was a, a man by the name of Colonel Mulholland, and he became General Mulholland, very, very famous um, uh, special operations general. He was a graduate of Furman. Came through Furman, uh, went to the DH, lived life here, and he is, uh, was one of the top special operations commanders. Um, we have uh, General Pascaret, who is the top, uh, he's a top budgeter. He owns the Army's budget, which is very, very big. And so he's a Furman grad. So hopefully those accounting classes worked and he paid attention. But um, most notably what comes to me, you know, I'll tell you about it, but it's all about giving back is, is um, Major General Chris Ballard. And he's on with his wife, Michelle. And um, he's gonna tell you the quick story, but uh, I can think, we need to thank Michelle 
for General Ballard being here. And there's a, some story in there about uh, love and him leaving. But um, I just want to turn it over to you, uh, sir. Turn it over to you and just tell us, everybody, how did you become General Ballard? First off, how did you stay as Cadet Ballard? And then your, your contribution back as part of the Firm Military Alumni Association. Well, well look, but, I mean, before we, before we talk about us, I, I got to tell you all, I mean, to, to hear Mary and Josh talk and to hear Chris describe the program, if that doesn't get you pretty inspired and hopeful about where America's uh, course is going to go, then I don't know what does. I mean, we've got some really remarkable people. And Chris won't tell you this, but um, as small as Furman and Bob Jones and North Greenville are, there are an awful lot of other programs out there that have been uh, been terminated by the army because they just weren't um, they, they weren't producing what it needed in the investment that was necessary to keep those ROTC programs going. Um, Furman's is in remarkable shape, and to have uh, three small schools with a cadet population of nearly a hundred cadets is just unheard of. And I, I, I think it speaks one to the type of the quality of individuals that are joining the program. It speaks to the quality of the universities that attract those great students. And it really bodes well for our military writ large to have really remarkable young women and men like Mary and Josh um, come through um, our campuses and then go off to do things in the army. Um, so you know, one, you know, one of the things that Furman has always been proud of is its liberal arts education and what Chris, I think, tried to allude to, and he did allude to, is the fact that it's not just the Army experience that we, we want these cadets to walk away with. We want them to be whole citizens, um, leaders with, with a depth and breadth of knowledge and critical thinking and confidence to be able to, to lead other um, men and women of our of our nation, um, other sons and daughters, and and Furman has a unique ability to do that. Michelle and I met in the Furman Singers. Um, um, I you know I, I joined the Furman Singers because I really thought all the pretty girls on campus were in the Singers, and it worked. Um, but uh, we I, I I ended up taking a three year scholarship um, and was only going to stay in long enough to pay it back. And uh, we ended up serving in Germany in the late uh, 80s. Um, we were serving in Germany in an armor unit when the Berlin Wall fell down and East and West kind of changed and the whole global dynamic changed and, and Michelle and I made the, the, the decision together that we'd kind of stick around for a little bit longer and see where this would take us. And so last year I retired after 35 years in the military and we served in Korea, we served in Europe, um, I, I, I spent 13 years overseas, um, two years in Afghanistan, a year in Iraq. Uh, but it was really a, a, a great way to live. It was a great way to raise a family. And um, it wasn't what our initial intent was going to be, but we're, we're, we're grateful for the opportunity that the Army gave us. And now we're, we're grateful to be back in Greenville and uh, being around these great cadets and these students around for Army. That is a great story. <laughs> I wondered if Michelle wanted to add something, especially about your boys. Oh, uh, well, thank you. It's nice to be with you all today. You know, our, our story really has come full circle from where we met at Furman. Music brought us together, I think, but a life of service is what's kept us together. Um, uh, a lot of love and, and, you know, the joy over having our family as, as we moved literally, you know, around the world. We do have uh, four children. We have three sons and a daughter. Our sons all serve. Um, I don't know that I expected that this would be the family firm, the family business. Um, and I'll be honest enough to say that as a parent, I, I, I questioned each of their motives when they came in line to graduate high school and looked at what their dad did you know, as a, as a possible career path. They all had really, really good um, alibis uh, for what they wanted to do and heartfelt plans that indicated that they had not only looked at their father, but they had looked around at other leaders within, within the military, army and otherwise. And that, that had made a huge impression on them. Um, each of our sons that, that are now uh, serving officers all, all did ROTC. None of them came to this path by, by, the, uh, by the academies. And I think that they would, uh, would echo what uh, the cadet said today, you, you, you get a full experience of being in school, enjoying your collegiate life, but you're also training for your, your future service. I think that makes you a better leader. Um, I, I won't say it makes you the, the best, I'm not trying to top you, Sma, but that experience that you garner while, while in school 
and living among your peers sets you up well um, in, in the future. Um, we've done this as a team sport. Um, I, I, I wouldn't have changed a thing despite the years and the times we've spent apart. Uh, our sons have since deployed. Those are hard times too, but um, they have spouses standing by who, who you know, are willing to take up those reins and go forward. Our military is in great hands and the young men and women who serve are our nation's treasure and that they get a chance to train as they do at Furman and other fine schools like that is just extraordinary. We've seen it at work, we've lived it, and uh, thank you for wanting to understand more about it and being supportive of it. That's wonderful. Chris, can you tell us, the other Chris, <laughs> can you tell us a little more about how OLLI members could um, be helpful, be involved, Yes. Um, so I think going back to that previous talking about, you know, uh, engage, invest and support. I think it's it's when we do have those events and I, I know we're going to get better with our communication. So when we, if we can have the spring football announce their schedule. Uh, so there's going to be sports, whether there's fans in the stadiums or not. I'm not sure. But uh, when we have those military appreciation games, um, it's great for the cadets to come there. It's great for the cadets. They put on a lot of stuff there. Um, but getting getting them involved as far as um, attending those events and, and being there with us and and talking with the cadets. Um, and the second thing I really think is we're missing, we need that story. We need those leadership nuggets that are out there that are out in the Ali community. And um, if there's any guest speaking that is available that would like to do on, on a subject or a topic, I think there's a big investment there that we're missing. That's more than your dollars, to be honest. Um, the dollars are nice, but it's what's in here and what, what those stories had, good, bad, or indifferent that we need to do. So um, connecting with me, they can send me a direct note and, and request kind of you know, a time period or a time that they can come and speak. Right now, we're under limitations on that. It would be really just Zoom. Um, but when we get this thing back running, which we will, um, getting, getting them in our classrooms and helping us kind of share that story or if we're on a topic about, if Mary's learning about um, land navigation. And there's a story out there about somebody who got lost or the, 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 the training they went through or some a story from um, a, a combat zone they were in. That really helps. It helps bring some, some tangible um, use for that. So uh, follow us on social media, give us some likes. And I think that's where we're at there too. So that's the best, best thing I could say right now. I hope you'll follow up and work with Nancy to communicate, um, you know, maybe every term, a, a little blurb. We have a weekly newsletter, so to speak, our Ali notes, and to say in two or three sentences, hey, if you have a story for us, you have a background in the military, and you would like to speak to our cadets, contact me. Just a little nudge. And we always have new people each term also. And so even though you've told us, and this is going to be recorded and others may listen to this, not everybody has heard this message. So that would be a good way for you to let our other members know. Uh, and I think they would love to participate. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We had this visual, and we were going to be in person. We we're going to be at the Yount Center, cadets everywhere. And that would have been really nice today. But you're right. Um, yeah, we do need to get, I, I need. I think that's what we need. We need that because that's the that's the experience we're going to with General Ballard was saying. That's the experience that you get from going to a school like this where you can get a vast amount of broadening and learning, um, which applies to, oh, wait, the colonel was actually right when he said this, this, and this, because what your story said this happened while you were in Vietnam. That'd be great. Absolutely. Definitely. Good. But uh, social media really is the best way to follow us, both Facebook and Instagram. And then my direct, my contact info, I think is on it, but make sure they, they know that and they can contact me anytime. Before we go, I'm wondering if um, Josh would like to make any other comments about what you've learned, about what you're looking forward to. Uh, I will, I will say as a, a final remark, and, and this speaks, I think volumes to the, the Furman program and not only the RTC department, but our leadership that we've had over the past three years that I've been here. Um, I knew from high school, uh, I was a basketball player. Um, I, I thought for a little bit that basketball was going to be my life and I, I wanted to play basketball professionally. And um, I sort of had this, this nudge that I wanted to be in the military and I wanted to serve my country. Um, and not only has that, that changed um, dramatically, but as I've gotten to the Furman program and I've seen the leaders that we've had here at Furman and the opportunities that we've had so far just as a cadet has only exemplified that. So I'm, I'm super excited to, um, to have the commission within this next year and a half um, and to do that part and serve my country. Thank you. And Mary, would you like to make any other comments about this past weekend or what you're looking forward to the next three years? Of course. Um, I, 
I'm still pretty new to the program. Um, and right now I'm trying to um, learn as much as I can. Um, but I can say the one thing that I have, um, I've really liked the most about the program so far is how supportive everybody is. Um, like I said before, I know that Cadre is super accessible, um, extremely supportive. Everybody is um, invested in you academically, um, like phys physical, physically. Um, I know they put physical fitness as a, as a huge priority. Um, and then as a leader, um, this past week, I think we, we had a 5K. Uh, we ran a 5K um, for one of our PT sessions um, and Captain Metcalf um, ran, the, ran the 5K with me and that was the fastest 5K I've ever run. Um, but just having her support there and having somebody there helping me um, and giving me tips on breathing and all these different things was huge. It was, it was so impactful. Um, and just little things like that, um, I really, really like about the program. Um, and I'm looking forward to um, the next three and a half years and figuring out what I want to branch and figuring out um, exactly what I want to do in the military and how I want um, what I want my career to look like. That's great. Thank you to Christopher and Michelle. Thank you to Christopher Manganaro, especially to Josh and Mary and all of those of you who have participated. We hope to see you next week with Lunch and Learn. Goodbye. Thank you very much.